G'day folks. Oh, well, it's time for part two of the inverter or Fujitsu inverter indoor unit autopsy. I've got the uh, digital control board out and I also brought in part of a Dakin inverter unit. This is the outdoor unit's inverter VFD. I just wanted to explain or elaborate on why I don't like them based on my last comments. Uh, this one's out of one from the scrapyard. I scrapped it out on Saturday along with a half a dozen others. And as you can see, there's a lot of debris in here. There's a dead huntsman. There's a lot of oxide and bur signs of burning on those little bridging wires. There's another dead spider there. Looks like it got half burnt. Uh, a lot of green oxide on a lot of those bridging wires because all this is open to the elements in this end. There is a metal casing there, but as long as the fan's pulling air through the unit, this gets a little bit of air circulation, and that air circulation carries moisture. And in the case of my area, salt air from the sea. So, according to one of the AC techs I was talking to on Saturday, um, he's replaced quite a lot of these and quite a lot of Fu uh, Fujitsu inverters for the same reason critters getting in and shorting things out or corrosion because there is corrosion all the way up to here you can see traces getting eaten off and I'll try and zoom in a bit better and dad's playing with his bike so there's a bit of noise in the background yeah as you can see around that connector those traces are fairly well broken down it's stripping the varnish off them Crispy Huntsman. He's shorted something out and died. There's oxide all over this board. Lots of it. Yeah, this is why I don't like inverters. I know they do perform very well in low ambient temperatures and things like that, but they're overpriced and they just fail too quickly. Like this, this thing's had insect and moisture damage. I know the new ones, they've improved the enclosures and they've varn or lacquered the boards in aerospace grade PCB coatings, but they're still suffering overload failures and things like that. So yeah, this isn't the worst one I've seen. The worst one was mostly green oxide everywhere. I'm surprised it ran as long as it did. But yeah, even that little test point there, TP 20. It's all green oxide. Not good. Okay, back to the Fujitsu. Now let's look at the control side of things. There isn't much in here because most of it's in the outdoor unit, but the red one is the communications wire. It comes out through this little sealed multi-pack thing. It's a... See that part number on there? It'll be a specialised unit. It's got several little fine wires as well as what look like DC wires. Yeah, coming off there. Oh, no, AC neutral. AC neutral goes to there. That one comes out there. That's interesting. It still uses serial communication though, that's the thing. There's only three wires. There's two power wires and the red one. So that's got to send all of the commands. I don't know, maybe someone knows how well these things work. Big filter capacitor for the DC side, which is from this transformer. Uh, transformer is... No, that's fan capacitor. Transformer goes in there, I think. Yeah. DC rectifier. Oh, regulator, sorry. That's the rectifier there. Little bridge, baby little bridge rectifier. Regulator is a... Zero, sorry, D1932. It's got an R symbol on top of it. Um, not a lot else. It's by FGL Japan. 9704-395047. Don't know if that means anything to anyone. There's another rectifier there. No, it's not a rectifier. What is that? SSR. Hmm. Either way, there's not much else. 
baby little mains transformer, 240 to 12 volts. Too small to be really practical for anything other than a basic control control supply signal. Um, yes, there's a fan capacitor. That can go straight across there. Fan, three speeds. Well, actually, no, two speeds. It'll be common and then high and low. Mm. And there's the little stepping motors we discussed last time for controlling the flaps. Same with that one there. And the rest of this is coil unit. Thankfully I've been removing screws prior to this. That is a liquid splitter. That splits out from the liquid line in, which is actually already evaporating the expansion points in the outdoor unit, as I mentioned earlier. And it splits it into various passages in these coils, and it also comes back out in a common manifold, which is below it. That's the uh, suction line manifold coming out of the coils, and that's the uh, liquid line going in. You can sort of see it there. It's pretty tight tightly made mess of bits but it's all there. I know someone mentioned pulling a vacuum on something like this until it implodes but you'd have to actually be at an elevated pressure for it to work because part of commissioning one of these units is to pull an absolute vacuum down to micron level to remove all air and moisture in conjunction with using dry nitrogen to help absorb moisture. So you can't really implode these, they're very tough. Even, even making them pop, you'd need hundreds of pounds per square inch, a thousand PSI or more. They're really, really tough, so you won't see any videos like that in a while, not unless I get a big enough pressure chamber to put it in, crank the ambient pressure up to something like 150 PSI, and then pull absolute vacuum on that. Then you might have enough ambient pressure to crush the tubes. Because remember, vacuum, when you pull a vacuum on something, the only thing that squashes it is the atmospheric pressure surrounding it. Vacuum doesn't crush something from inside. You just change the pressure differential so that you've got positive pressure on the outside. Uh, yeah. Barrel fan, glass filled nylon, pretty hard stuff. Uh, I'll take some more screws out and get the rest of this blower out. Okay, so when the unit's sitting on the wall, it's pretty much mounted like that. There really isn't much difference in the angle. Yeah, set it like that. That's essentially how it sits on the wall and the way the condensate drains on these things work with such a large wraparound coil is there's one up here, a catch pan, and just the angles of the coils and things are all carefully made so that the condensate drains down to here or up to there and it goes down that little chute there down through this part of the housing and down to here. Now that one's capped off because it wasn't needed, but the other end is not capped off and it runs outside. That's pretty typical. You don't often see the condensate drain on that side being used because uh, that one there can run out the back of the wall with the line set together. Um, same with here. There's a little run out point which goes under the motor spindle and comes down there. So if any of those get blocked, you get water running down the back wall and the only way to service them is to remove the air conditioner completely or remove the indoor unit which involves pump down, disconnecting of the pipes and things and then uh, carefully dismantling it to the point that I have where the electronics box and the coil and everything is out of the uh, unit and then you've got to get in here and clean it all up. So it's a hell of a lot of work. But typically most people just run the unit till it dies or it causes problems and they just replace it. Now underneath, yeah that's where the louvers and the vents are. So yeah, just the airflow patterns and the angle of the coils are very carefully designed so that you don't get condensate coming out through the vents or leaking out anywhere else until something gets blocked up. And then you do get con condensate running down your walls. So either way, I better get this fan off so we can see a little bit more. And a screw in there on the spindle, two screws there. I've already taken that end cap off. 
They're all rubber mounted for ultra low vibration. Very quiet. Okay, well it's about the end of it. We've got the motor out. It's a pretty simple standard induction motor, two speed. Made in Thailand. <laughs> Nothing real special there. Plastic retainer. Large squirrel cage blower. It's all made out of glass filled nylon. Virtually no practicality for anything, so they just go in the bin. And the plastic housing, which definitely needs a bit of a clean. That's all mould. Quite evil, these things. Wash your hands, and if you're really fussy, wear gloves. Don't breathe it in. Don't blow it with compressed air. Yeah. You've got to be fairly careful with these when they get to this point. The uh, worst thing you can do is blow stuff around with compressed air. And if you do, do it outside with the wind blowing away from you. Otherwise, you'll probably end up dying of some god-awful disease. And that releases the condensate pan. Oh, well, upper, con upper condensate pan. The lower one's sort of the same. It'll snap in somewhere. Yeah, underneath. That's alright, that's all rubbish for the tip. Anywho, that's the end of that one. Thanks for watching.